Coming up on DTNS, do we need a competitor to the Switch? The quixotic pursuit of instant grocery delivery and Square becomes Block. You okay, Jack? This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, December 2nd, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. From Austin, Texas, I'm Justin Robert Young. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Uh, we were just doing our best to uh, skate the edge of controversy on Good Day Internet. What did we talk about? You can only find out by getting the show at patreon.com slash DTNS. Speaking of which, big thanks to our top patrons, including Miranda Janelle, Justin Zellers, and Eric Holm. Let us begin with a few tech things you should know. WhatsApp users can soon book an Uber drive by sending a text message. That's all you got to do. Don't need the Uber app at all. The partner program is being offered in Lucknow, India to start. In a statement, Uber said that even user registrations for its services can be handled through WhatsApp itself. The WhatsApp business platform already works in place of SMS to handle purchase invoices and related business information to users on platforms like Yatra and Book My Show. Yeah, WeChat users are over there trying to go in. You're just getting that? Hmm. All right. Mm. Uh, Tesla launched the Cyber Quad for Kids on its website, a $1,900 small electric ATV designed for kids eight years old and older. It can go up to 10 miles per hour, 15 miles of range, charges in five hours. Shipping begins within two to four weeks, limited to the United States for now. Tesla announced in 2019 that a full-size Tesla Cyber Quad would be available as an option with its Cyber Truck. It's kind of our first peek at it. Facebook announced it will make two-factor authentication mandatory for its Facebook Protect program. Facebook Protect provides advanced security for people at risk to account uh, to, to, to account breaches such as activists, journalists, government officials, and the like. Of the 1.5 million accounts in the program, 950,000 have enabled 2FA already. So Facebook will require the rest to enable it in order to log into their account. On December 9th, a week from when I'm recording this right now, Apple must allow app developers to show links to external payment options unless it can convince the U.S. Ninth Circuit Court to issue a stay of that order. In a related court filing trying to convince that court to issue the stay, Apple says that if it's forced to do this, it may charge a commission on any transaction initiated from such links. That would still be consistent with the original ruling. It didn't say they couldn't do that, but it'll say, we will charge you to put that link in there. Google already announced a similar thing. They're charging an 11% commission on any external payments for the Google Play Store. Meanwhile, Bloomberg sources reported some other bad news for Apple, uh, warning uh, suppliers that demand is lower than expected for new iPhones. Earlier this year, NVIDIA announced that it would reissue older GPUs to help fill supply during the chip shortage. The company now announced a new variant of the RTX 2060, originally released back in 2019, being available on December 7th. This new variant will get some upgrades, including 12 gigabytes of RAM, 13% more CUDA cores, Cores. Then the standard RTX 2060. The 2060 launched at $349, and NVIDIA said that it expects pricing to reflect that the new card is a premium version. <laughs> premium, meaning you can get it, maybe. Mm. Actually, mm. maybe not. All right. Uh, speaking of chips, let's talk about Qualcomm's. We've got a few uh, follow-ups on the Qualcomm announcements. Uh, yesterday, we announced the new naming scheme, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Uh, and now we know that the Xiaomi 12 phone will be the first device with the actual new flagship Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip in it. Uh, the expectation is it might even ship in China by the end of this month. Of course, multiple models from many manufacturers, not the least of which include Samsung Galaxy S22 series, are going to follow right after that. But Xiaomi looks like it might be able to say first. Qualcomm also announced the Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3. Oh, yes, these two names are so much simpler. Uh, and the 7C Plus Gen 3 platform, these are for ARM-based PCs built on a 5 nanometer process. Qualcomm says they'll get 5G support for both sub-6 and millimeter wave service, multi-day battery life, upgraded camera and audio functions, and ship to cloud security. And there's the Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 gaming platform. 
as well for handheld gaming devices. It can support streaming games from a uh, PC or a cloud, as well as running native Android games. The Adreno GPU in it uh, can handle up to 144 frames per second and 10-bit HDR. It can also support 5G, USB-C, and 4K TV out. Uh, not just the chip announcement, though. They did a smart thing and worked with Razer, that makes very pretty devices, to create a very pretty dev kit available for developers that has a 120 hertz 6.65 inch OLED display, four-way speakers, and built-in controllers. In other words, it's a handheld gaming device, you know, like Steam is trying to make or like Nintendo makes with the Switch. Uh, for game streaming, it includes a 1080p 60 frame per second camera and dual mics. This is just for devs to be able to like mess with and see how it works and maybe come up with their own or build software for somebody who's coming up with their own. But it has turned some heads out there. People people seem very excited about this because a lot of people are attracted to the idea of, gosh, I love the Nintendo Switch. I love its portability. But wouldn't it be great if I could play some games that Nintendo doesn't offer for the Switch? And an mm -hmm. open platform might be a route to do that. You want to know, Tom, what the best design feature of the Switch is? What's that? It plays Mario Kart. You want to know what the second best design feature of the Switch is? It plays Animal Crossing? Yep. The third one is Zelda. The fourth one is Metroid. And so on and so on. <laughs> there is nothing magical about the Switch's design. Indeed, when we first saw the the, the design of the Switch, it was looked at as something like, oh, okay, well, they're going to go down the same road as, 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 as the Vita. Uh, that seemed like a form factor that had kind of... Uh, 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 Mm -hmm. worked itself out of fashion considering we had a rise in phones and tablets and stuff like that. The, there's nothing magical there. Yes, I'm, there is a market for a form factor like this that can play things that are outside the Nintendo ecosystem, but I do have a question of exactly how big it is. Yeah, that, that's how big it is. That space between Justin talking and me is <laughs> exactly how big <laughs> Uh, that market is. Uh, listen, I I know and I want those of you who are like, no, no, I want this to email us, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. But don't just tell us you want it. We know you want it. Tell us why you why? think it would catch on. You know, yeah. like, I want it because of this, and I think a lot of other people would, because just you wanting it isn't enough to make it worthwhile. But obviously other people think it's worth pursuing it's, because you see so many companies you know messing around with this including I, honestly Qualcomm. this just totally reminds me of the instance where the micro console was considered to be a viable gaming platform alongside traditional xbox playstation nintendo and you had the oh yeah you had a you had a crowdsourced funded you know android based android tv based gaming <laughs> box and tom has one up in his hand yep, and uh just, it you know it was supposed hand. It was supposed to be super disruptive. Everyone came out. Shield TV, I have one. It was kind of designed to be a game changer. Ultimately, it just ends up being a really amazing uh, content streamer, set-top box for you know 17 different streaming uh, services and yeah. you know, stuff I have. But I do see this platform having use outside of gaming, whether you can use it to control, say, a drone and still have a real live camera. That display would be perfect. For it, I, and I can, yeah, but it, but, it, but at that point, sure, like, like yes, something yeah. in that form factor could eventually be used for other things. I will certainly buy that, but uh, uh, it's the, the no, idea, I, I I am with you. It's yeah. not going to sell. Uh, it will sell in the hundreds of thousands, if that. It is not a million unit, you know, mark device that you see with with uh, uh, a traditional uh, console unit. And and let me just say one. Well, last but that's thing. all you know, dependent on the games, right? Exactly. I mean, that you know, Nintendo Switch sold so many Switches because people like Nintendo games. No, 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 no. It wasn't just because it sold so many games and it could play those games because it was the only platform that you could play those games and, on. And, and also, the games were great, well, yeah. not good. It was, like they, like yeah. the Mario game was great. The Zelda game was great. Like like uh, the Animal Crossing game came around at the right, exact right time during the lockdown. So it's like th they have had a run of exceptional games to make that platform work, which has kind of always been Nintendo's. Uh, I, th I think the idea of this is, yes, but now cloud streaming. thing that Ouya didn't have was the ability to cloud stream more powerful games 
than the hardware could support on its own. Plus, we have advances in ARM processing. Look at what Qualcomm's doing. You could actually do more on this machine than you could before. That's what they're thinking. I think it's still an open question whether that yeah. changes the dynamics enough. If I'm wrong, go on Twitter and call me a big, fat, stupid idiot. <laughs> now, the information sources say that Instacart plans to launch a 15-minute delivery service in a U.S. city as early as February. Right now, Instacart offers two-hour grocery delivery in most places and 30 minutes in some. Instacart is supposedly talking to logistics companies for proposals on a system that would manage couriers to bring deliveries from the grocery stores that Instacart works with. This would put it in competition with newer companies like Joker, Getter, and Gorillas, all offering instant or super fast grocery delivery. 9 to 5 Google says that uh, none of these operations are close to even sniffing profitability, at least at this point, with the information saying Joker spends $80 to deliver a $10 order. Partly, that's possible because on uh, of the massive scale and warehouse system needed to make such delivery possible, but also because competition is fierce where these services operate. So to be successful, you have to hope your, comp your competitors run out of cash before you do. And that often means offering big discounts on your order to get people into the customer base. Investors do think that this is something that will work. Joker just got $260 million in uh, a round of funding and has a $1.2 billion valuation tom you have been in this game a long time i don't know in my what, estimation the grocery delivery game uh, uh, the, the, the 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 tech the tech world right <laughs> the internet world the world of internet-based services uh, uh, specifically direct to consumer i don't know if there has been a greater holy grail for which uh, it wrecks any and everyone billions of dollars burnt incinerated in the goal of 15 minute grocery delivery from web van to now all have have come in many with uh, gigantic amounts of cash different uh, uh, ways of doing it slightly all have failed I only regret that I don't have a web van like container or a, my cosmo.com keychain at hand uh, it is to pull shocking up at this. that you don't yeah. uh, look it, it this is one of those things where it's it's very easy to just go like, oh, overvaluation. Those VCs are dumb. This will never work. Uh, they do think it could work, but I even I am looking at this going, right, but the only way even you say the math works is if there's only one left. It's like Highlander. In the end, there can be only one. <laughs> and you you have to have a massive operation and you have to get a huge percentage of, of the populace to adopt it. And you have to take those already razor thin margins of, of a grocery store and slice them deli thin. Uh, and then yes, it'll be worth $1.2 billion. Not all of these are going to work. That's how VC works. You put a lot of bets and you know a bunch of them are going to fail. Uh, but the one that works is the one that makes up for all the rest. I say to you, uh, get those discounted 15 minute deliveries where and when you can, folks, because I don't, I, this is one where I just don't see how, how it plays out. The, t the technology is not new. It's it's just the attempt. It's logistics. Well, I, the, the one thing that is different is that now we live in a world where there are a lot of people who are out there that want to deliver things, right? Yeah, more like that, that is different that from the yes. other models. Web van was there's going to literally be a van in your area with a small bodega inside of it, uh, uh, or at least that, that worth of, of stuff. You are able to order the things and it will be able to drive over. There was a similar thing called Rocket Spoon that happened in the Bay Area for a while that was doing that for food. That you could get it delivered faster than anything else uh this i mean i guess that's the only thing that's different but still man like i, I don't know what the material difference between 15 dollars or, or 15 minutes and 30 minutes is i don't think that there's necessarily a gigantic market to pay a premium for it uh, uh I, I don't know it, it, to me this just seems like yet another uh, uh it will be a, yet another uh, a pile of bones on the side of this cursed highway I mean, as somebody who uh, wants a burrito when she wants it, the idea of getting it within 15 minutes sounds great. Uh, me and lots of other people I know who live in more rural areas, there is not there is not somewhere within 15 minutes drive, if I was driving, to go yeah. get that burrito. It just can't be done. I, I don't, we're not talking about burritos. We're talking about the makings of burritos, right? Not, yeah. not even a burrito. 
like a, a, a can of beans, four tortillas, all of the, some protein, yeah, like lettuce, wh- whatever tomatoes, it is. Like cream, I right? can't, I can't go to the store with. Well, I can kind of go within fifteen minutes, but then I gotta go fifteen minutes back. Sure, yeah, but They're this just, is. Yeah, th- this is for the city, right? And so they're probably going to launch it in either New York or San Francisco or something like that. So it's like, uh, uh, but again, it's, it's uh, man, I, I don't know why the, everybody just keeps coming back. This was one of the original ideas, the original web service ideas. And well, everybody cannot such a help great idea. stand under the stove again. The idea is so great. It's like, uh, I don't own a store, but maybe I can get whatever I want from the store in 15 minutes. That sounds great. It's the but, flying car of service yeah, logistical enterprises. Yeah. Well, we have some good news uh, in Microsoft land, everybody. Uh, the new Office UI that was showed off in June is rolling out to all Office 365 and Office 2021 users now. This includes more rounded design to match Windows 11, theme matching, also some tweaks to buttons here and there. Not significant changes away from the ribbon interface, but... You know, some changes nonetheless. In other news, users report that Edge on Windows 10 and 11 displays prompts when navigating to the Chrome download page, rendered natively by Edge as a system pop-up, not available to other websites. The pop-up has different versions of text. One reads, Microsoft Edge runs on the same technology as Chrome, with the added trust of Microsoft. Another reads, that browser is so 2008. Do you know what's new? Microsoft Edge. That's how you know they're cool. And another example reads, I hate saving money, said no one ever. Microsoft Edge is the best browser for online shopping. Each one has a button with text related to the message like, shop smarter now. Google displays messages on some of its own websites, encouraging users to switch to Chrome if it detects other browsers. But it doesn't add pop-ups to other websites. So that's where things differ a little bit here. Yeah, it only does it on its own website when it shows up and detects Edge or Firefox or something. But uh, Microsoft is putting it over someone else's website, which I find rude. I'm not going to lie. This bugs me. It's not along the lines of it's like a security breach kitchen. or anything like that. It's it also, yeah, there, there some of their messages are a little too cute. Uh, the one that just says this runs on edge runs on the same tech as Chrome. Uh, wouldn't you like to just stay right here? You got all the best parts. That one's not as egregious, but, but really I don't like any of this. Like, Fine. When you know when when you when you go to Microsoft.com, you could say like, "Hey, we see you're not running Edge. Switch on over." But to tell the Edge users, "No, don't go," seems a little desperate. It it does. It's like I'm trying to break up with you. Can you please just take it with dignity instead of instead of begging and pleading? If you're using Edge to download Chrome, it's being done for a reason, presumably. Uh, I think that this is also just part of a larger trend uh, of. Never in, in, especially when we came through Black Friday and, and Cyber Monday, it, it feels like apps and ecosystems have never been more brazen in using the ability that you are on their service to advertise directly to you, to use push messages or pop-ups and, and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It's like, look, I have no problem with there being a marketing message here or there, but man, it feels like, uh, and I guess it's because we've become so effective at blocking out other forms of marketing that that now this is just the only place that they know we're paying attention. But boy, is it annoying. Made me launch Vivaldi. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, hey, folks, you have a thought about something on the show but don't know our email address? Well, it's feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. <laughs> Right around recording time for DTNS on Wednesday, Square co-founder and CEO, still CEO of Square, Jack Dorsey, announced that the company is going to change its name to Block, effective December 10th. So it's still called Square right now, but on December 10th, it becomes Block. If you're looking for the stock ticker, don't worry, it'll still be SQ. Apparently they couldn't get BLK or BLOCK or anything like that. Uh, Dorsey said in the announcement, we built the Square brand for our seller business, which is where it belongs. So the merchant selling services will still be called Square. If you use Square, that will still be called Square. It's the parent company that will become Block. Uh, Square Crypto, which actually doesn't really have anything to do with the merchant stuff, it focuses solely on Bitcoin, is gonna be renamed Spiral. Everything else Square owns, Afterpay, Weebly, TBD, Tidal, uh, will all keep their names. 
TBD, if you're wondering, is the business that is focused on making a decentralized Bitcoin exchange. The newly dubbed Spiral is building open source projects to make Bitcoin a preferred currency. So they're both focused on Bit Bitcoin in different ways. So block, right? It obviously means blockchain. Not just the company statement said, it also means building blocks, ah. neighborhood blocks, and their ah. local businesses, Aww, communities nice. coming together at block parties full of music from Tidal, a blockchain, of course, a section of code, and obstacles to overcome. You know, when this when the story broke yesterday, and it was right after our show, uh, you know, I, I was trying to make some sense of it. And I do have to say, as, as someone who uses uh, Cash App regularly to send mm -hmm. and receive money, um, I, I sort of forgot that Square owned Title. I, I do see where there was a little bit of a disconnect with the overall branding. It's like, what what's the company? What do you own? So I kind of, I, I get this. At the same time, it's very coincidental timing uh, for, uh, you know, Square to sort of say, well, we're now called Block, and that's just what we're doing. And I don't know if anybody else has ever done such a thing to name a parent company something new, but we're doing it. Uh, 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 Sarah, I, I think that what you're eating around the edges on is that Jack Dorsey is, as the kids say, on one. Uh, uh, he yeah. is he is having uh, just a, a, a weird time of it, uh, leaving Twitter. He is uh, renaming Square. I guess here's my only thing. Got a new I haircut, get, pierced his ear. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get why Facebook went to meta. They, they want to get away from this idea of uh, uh, them being this content leverage data acquisition play and, and using the worst elements of society to do it and rather say, hey, our, our real focus is uh, the future. We have so many great engineers. We have this hacker culture. We want to help build the future. And, and, and so trust us to go out to the frontiers and do it. The thing with Square is especially through the pandemic, when contactless payments became something, you know, exponentially more a part of, I think, the average consumer's existence, Square has a great brand. When you think of Square, like uh, for me, when I see a Square reader and I forgot my wallet, it means I don't have to go back to the car and get it. I can just use my phone. I, I, I don't quite know why you would take all that goodwill and say, no, now we're blocked, but that's still Square. And also we're renaming this other thing, Spiral. Well, but I mean, I, it sounds like the Square brand for what you're talking about, Justin, doesn't go away. Square brand oh, exists sure. yeah. for, and for, for this contactless payment stuff. It's just that the parent company now is Block. Sure, I guess. But, but my thing is like, if I hear Block owns, you know, Block, if Square buys a, a new thing, I'm like, oh, I wonder how that's going to interact with this thing I like. Block buys it. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't even know what Block is. Uh, that's oh, why you do it. And really, and and if you to get away I, from I all that goodwill, I think people overemphasize. I think people overemphasize why they think Meta changed its name. Uh, this is at the first time a parent company has changed its name because they want to not be associated with one brand. You yeah. do this because you're like, people say Square bought Title. How does that work with Square? And Square's like, it doesn't. It, it works with a different strategy. And so if you say Block bought Title, you're like, oh, what else do they own? Uh, well, you know, what's their what's their purpose? Same with Meta. Meta isn't just, I mean, yes, they probably are hoping there's a little change in perception, but Meta also is a change to say like, look, Oculus and Facebook don't necessarily always have to interact with each other. We have different things that we want to do with Oculus. We have different things that we want to do with research and development, different businesses we want to get in all together because that's what big businesses do. They don't want to limit themselves. And so you change that parent company name to disassociate it from the brands and let the brand be the brand. So nobody goes like Square and Title. That's weird. They go, oh, Square, that's the payment thing. Oh, Title. Oh, Block owns them both. That makes sense. Because mm -hmm. most people don't know what parent company names are. What's the parent company name of Daily Tech News Show? Subbrilliant. Sub Brilliant LLC. Okay, well, you two work for it. That's why you know it. But most people <laughs> well, wouldn't know. Well, I mean, know. you just, you know. Well, I mean, I mean come on. Yeah, but it doesn't always have to be I like that. Was I smarter than Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg and named my company something different than the main brand? Yes, but... Look, they've I, finally gotten around I, to doing it right. I definitely, I, I, I get your point. I, I think, uh, truly, I, I really think that Square has too many businesses for Square to make sense. It makes sense for kind of the merchant side, 
Um, that's certainly what I, you know, if I see a square uh, kiosk in in a in a uh, a store, I know exactly what to do with it, kind of thing. Yeah, it's good I, vibes. I use the apps. It's very good vibes. Here's the thing: Disney didn't need to change their name when they bought ESPN. Nobody was like, "What? Are, is ESPN gonna be cartoons now?" Like, like they were. They, it was just a it large thing that people have a good, though. People they, are like, they have "Wait a good minute. feeling." You have a good feeling. Whenever somebody buys, Disney. whenever Disney buys something adult, they're like, "Wait, so the this kids company is gonna?" It does cause that Disney doesn't care. Because uh, it so, doesn't matter. Because by and large, people like well, Disney things. But that it doesn't matter cuts both ways, right? It's like so. No, nobody's gonna remember that it's oh, called. Sure, Bond. I know, but we're paid by Subbrilliant LLC to talk about <laughs> these things on the internet. Also, so have... also like five people in chat wrote Subbrilliant what do you mean before you're you two paid even by said Subbrilliant it. LLC, Justin. The heck? What am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, don't tell her that. <laughs> no, Sarah hey, gets paid. Uh, all right, uh, let me let me let me change the subject okay. so we can move off this whole payment issue. A new report by the UN's International Telecommunications Union found that the number of people using the internet globally has increased from 4.1 billion in 2019 to 4.9 billion in 2021. The report cited the COVID connectivity boost leading user, internet users to grow more than 10% in 2020, the largest annual increase in a decade. 76% of urban dwellers globally use the internet compared to 39% of those in rural areas. 37% of the world, or about 2.9 billion people, have never used the internet. Yeah, because some of the people that are counted as using it may not have it in their home. Uh, yeah. They may share a device or something like that, but they they use it enough to count. 37%. Never use the internet. That to me, there's all kinds of conversations you can have on the back of that. But to me, this is just a number to have in your pocket. I feel like, okay, where are we when we talk about how many people have the internet? Like there was a big deal when we passed 50% years ago. So this is where we are. We're about just under two thirds and, of, the, of the world. You know, at, at this point, we are getting to the to the element of of you know some of like the the, the bottom billion kind of like poorest people in America. And the more we we can, I think, connect some of those communities. In the world. In the world, sorry, uh, 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 the the better off the the world will be. I think that, that the internet has a a, a tremendous leveling uh, effect that beyond all the social media kind of megrams that we tend to think about in in terms of negative elements, I think it is a fantastic resource for for uh, everybody. Well, and that thirty seven percent of the world who has not used the internet yet, okay, huge market. Um, you know, the, imagine I don't know couple of years ago when it was like, wow, look at all these folks who just are mobile first, just didn't have an office in their house, you know, didn't set up some desktop computer, you mm -hmm. know, as, as being, you know, their, that, that was how they got online kind of thing. Totally leapfrogged that whole thing. You know, what will that 37% be and, and how will they use it? Yeah. And, and, uh, you, you saw, how much internet usage changed when we passed that 50% mark, when we when we penetrated the mainstream uh, over the past 10 years or so. What's that last third uh, gonna do? It'll be interesting, it'll be interesting to keep an eye on. All right, let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. This one comes in from Mike Mills. Hello, Mike. Mike says, this isn't the same company that you talked about, he's talking about yesterday's show, about doing 7-Eleven deliveries, robots, but I can help answer the question of who is using this. I offer the Starship robots at Northern Arizona University. Turns out college kids don't really like to leave their dorms. <laughs> My niece told us about this when they first came out. I was recently on a campus, on the campus for a tour, and I saw them all over the place. There was even one time where the robot was surrounded by our tour group, and I was fascinated watching how it dealt with a non-moving crowd. Took a few seconds, but I speculate that after about 30 seconds, a remote driver took control and started having the robot say things to alert people to its presence and ask them to move out of the way. While Waymo was testing their cars in Chandler, Arizona, which is right outside of Phoenix, there isn't much weather there and the roads are mostly in a grid system. The NAU campus, the Northern Arizona University campus, gets a fair amount of snow in the winter and the roads are winding and spread out over a few square miles. I have to believe this tech will take off at other colleges and universities at a minimum. Maybe it doesn't make sense in the suburbs or crowded cities, but I do believe there is a place for our robot delivery overlords. Yeah, I wish I would have mentioned Starship yesterday. This is great. Thank you for sending this, uh, Mike. Th there is Starship on other campuses as, as well as office campuses uh, doing mm. the same thing. Uh, and you're right. 
Uh, Northern Arizona, great place to test this in weather. I, I once ordered Jack in the Box in in the snow in Flagstaff, Arizona. So, uh, quick, go lumberjacks. Quick side note: they actually have these over by my parents at the local uh, supermarket, and you can see them crossing a six-lane highway every now and then. Really? They, you see them crossing a six-lane highway. A six can you explain lane that? Highway? Because the way or, you or say or that or makes it sound like they just plow across not, not, the interstate. Not a highway. I mean, slamming road. on their it's, brakes. It's, a, it's, a, it's like you know three. <laughs> gotcha. Three. Okay. 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 At a road, not a highway. I mean, yeah. at, at a, a, a stoplight. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah stoplight. Okay. Four-way stoplight. Yeah. So okay. what you're saying is, yes, I what I'm saying is right. They are in other places, yeah. and one of them is where your parents are. That's and it works pretty well in the suburb. I mean, lots of driveways, lots of people driving in and out. Yep. Uh, from Brian, following up on the discussion in Good Day Internet. Now, folks on DTNS, you wouldn't have heard this, but we were trying to remember the name of the disease that mm. spread through World of Warcraft years ago. Brian says the virtual disease in World of Warcraft was corrupted blood, a debuff that jumped containment in a raid and spread to the overworld. I wrote an article about it for friend of the show, Russ Pitts, at The Escapist back in the day. We'll, have a, link to, uh, we'll have a link to Brian's uh, article on that in the show notes as well. Thank you for that, Brian. And thank you for, for, for clearing that up. Uh, Scott was very pleased when I forwarded this email to him. If you have feedback, uh, questions, comments, you say, you know, I, I know what you're thinking of. It's that word. I've got corrupted blood. Please do send it our way. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. And today we have some good news that we have four new brand new bosses. Dennis Horton, Janish Hoffman, Tyson Lee, and Karen Deshmuk. All just started backing us on Patreon. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Janish. Thank you, Tyson. And thank you, Karen. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what uh, levels they're at, but if they're at the co-executive producer and up now, I just changed out the merch for the loyalty program. So every three months, if you stay at your level, you get a thing. It used to be at the analyst level and up, it now starts at the co-executive producer level and up. So more people getting merch, new designs from Len Peralta, all fresh at patreon.com slash DTNS. Well, thank you also to you, Justin Robert Young, uh, a, a, a king among men. Uh, what have you been up to lately? Uh, well, uh, uh, two things very quick. Number one, on the Politics, Politics, Politics episode that comes out tomorrow, I will teach you what the Grinch can explain about our modern political landscape. Uh, and uh, I wanted to congratulate Brian Brushwood and everybody else who helped work on the uh, the series that we did called World's Greatest Con. Yesterday it was named in the top 50 of all uh, podcasts that were subscribed to in 2020 by Pocket Cast. Uh, so thank you. Uh, I know that the DTNS listenership was a huge part of that, a huge part of our launch. Thank you to everybody who downloaded it, specifically those on Pocket Cast, because you guys uh, gave us a, a really cool title to move forward on. And season two is in the works. Well, that is great news. Uh, congratulations to all of you. Well, on this show, we are live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 21.30 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we'll be back tomorrow. Allison Sheridan is going to talk about Tesla's self-driving experience. And Len Peralta will be with us as well. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>